Show people what you're reading on a plane. Just do a flash every once in a while. Yeah, just let them know, like, yeah. whoa. Hi, everyone. It's the Book Cougars, two middle-aged women on the hunt for a good read. I'm Emily. And I'm Chris. With our Friday Reads. Woo Friday Reads. Woo woo. We are standing up. In Book Cougars headquarters. This is the aftermath of <laughs> recording day. Yes. If you're wondering. <laughs> we're here to talk about our Friday reads. Yeah. So I'm reading The Maiden by Kate Foster. This is one of the books on the woman's long list. It had caught my eye before it made it on the list. Um, I ordered this one from Blackwell's in the UK. Just started it um, about... Well, less than 100 pages in and really enjoying it. It's based on a true story of a woman who is condemned to death in 1679 Scotland for allegedly killing her lover, who mm. also happened to be her uncle by marriage. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So enjoying it a lot so far. It has vibes of like early Sarah Waters, Emma Donahue. A little outlander just because of the setting though you know anytime in scotland i think of outlander but it's you know the time period as well kind of ish you haven't read an outlander in a while i haven't but i do what am i i'm on going to be on the fourth one and i have already downloaded it to my e-reader so coming up soon coming up yeah so the women's prize for fiction we'll put a link down below to their list they have both mm -hmm. a fiction and a non-fiction list this year they're doing non-fiction for the first time yes and this one also won an award from um bloody scotland crime debut of the year mm -hmm. and bloody scotland is um you know all things scottish crime fiction and non-fiction are any of you reading from the women's prize long list Tell us. We want to know because we want to live vicariously through yes. you because we don't we, think we can get to it. But we, that one sounds really we, good. We can't read them all, right. unfortunately. Exactly. Yeah. I am reading a book that I got on vacation from a little free library called Intimacies by Katie Kitamura. I had heard about this when it came out. It's about an interpreter who's working at The Hague, I believe. And I know it got a lot of reviews from people mm -hmm. that I have similar reading tastes too, but I haven't started it yet. I'm gonna spend the weekend with this one. If you've read it and enjoyed it, please let us know. Um, I think it has an incredibly compelling cover. This is like kind of up in the corner of a woman's face. You can see it. I think it's a woman laying down, but then there's this hand here. So I Oh, think... open the whole thing. Oh, okay. Because it looks like there's is something in her hand or... Oh no, that's or she's that hugging shoulder? somebody. Interesting. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a clutch. Is uh, it a clutch or a clench? Clinch. 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 Well, I mean, obviously it's not a romance cover, but it does look like two there people. might be a romance in here. I mean, okay. I don't know that it's an H E A, but there might be some love <laughs> happening. So Very good. I don't know. Tell us. Don't spoil it though. Yeah. <laughs> so the other one uh, I'm reading is why we read. On Bookworms, Libraries, and Just One More Page Before Lights Out. This is by Shannon Reed. And I came across this book uh, because our Goodreads librarian, Linda Johnson, is reading it. Um, or she read it already because uh, Shannon's going to be one of the Booktopia authors this spring up at the Northshire Bookstore in Manchester, Vermont. And Linda mentioned that this is one of her favorites so far of the lot that she's been reading really funny and relatable uh you know shannon's a teacher a lifelong reader it's just really humorous and heartwarming and i've been reading around in it i picked it up the other morning and went to chapters that caught my eye like pizza vampires um so really enjoyable uh good for the soul kind of stuff lovely yeah i love the cover i'm Getting Ready for National Poetry Month, which is in April, with this book that listener Karen put on our radar. It's called You Are Here, Poetry in the Natural World. It's edited and introduced by our 24th Poet Laureate of the United States, Ada Limon, 
fabulous poet. There's an introduction by Carla Hayden, our Librarian of Congress, and it's an anthology with a bunch of different um, poets. And it's kind of, it's nature writing and also about climate change and how that's affecting the nature that we're living with and in right now. Thank you to Milkweed Editions who sent us this copy. The book is publishing on April 2nd, just in time for National Poetry Month. Yeah. And we always love to hear about, you know, poetry anthologies or collections or poets that you really like. So if you have recommendations, please, you know, put them in the comments below. It'd be great to start collecting a list of um, some new to us poets. Yeah, and even if you just have a favorite poem, you know, sometimes just a single poem is published on a lot of these online um, magazines, especially, please let us know because I'm always mm -hmm. looking for something new to read. Well, and here on YouTube, um, we, you know, we have playlists and one of our playlists is poetry because a few years ago we invited friends right. and authors to read a favorite poem of theirs. And that is the most watched playlist that we have. And one of our, well, I think what, at least half of our top 10 videos in terms of views are poems that people lovingly contributed. So check that out too, because yeah. a really wide array of different types of poems by men, women, different time periods. Yeah, that's true. We did that. Wow, we were newbie book cougars <laughs> when we did that. That was a lot yeah, of fun. That was fun. Let's see, a little housekeeping. If you're a Patreon, reminder that our reading salon is on Sunday. You'll be getting an email with that link for the Zoom conversation. And if you're not a patron, you can join Patreon um, or um, increase your patronage to the $5 level. And everyone $5 or above are uh, automatically uh, sent a link to join that Zoom conversation. And then the other thing is we, for the first time, did an episode with BookTube Roulette that came, um, was, what do you call it, dropped? What do you call YouTube videos? I don't know. Some people say they published it. Okay. They uploaded it. Last Friday. <laughs> it's available now. Chris made it in a great little spinning roulette with our logo. I just love it. And I think there's been a little confusion. It's just a game that you play that you go to your bookshelf and get a book, it doesn't mean that you're gonna read that book. I yeah. mean, if you wanna read that book, have at it. A lot of people have been panicking, like, yeah. my TBR is already too big. Right. Yeah, it's just about like touching those books, you know, yeah. going, finding a book, um, you know, based on these numbers and, you know, checking the book out, sharing it with others if you'd like to, or just taking a walk down memory lane. Yeah. If it's one you have read, and if it's one you haven't read, Maybe you'll put it in a little free library because you're no longer interested, <laughs> or maybe it goes on your you know summer reading list or whatever. But it's not about picking your next book to read, although it can be used in that fashion. Yes, <laughs> do whatever you want. It's just a no pressure zone. It's yeah. just to have fun. So what else is there? Anything else? Oh, the other big thing is we picked our second yes. quarter read along, and that will be announced on episode two hundred four, which is dropping on Tuesday. Yes. So stay tuned for that. We announce it at the very beginning of the episode. So we don't make you wait too long. Yeah. I think that's it. Except, oh, well, tell us what you're reading. Of course, we would love to know that because, you know, we want to know. Yeah. That's well, who that. doesn't want to know what other people are reading? Oh, my gosh. I was on an airplane last week, and somebody was reading a book the whole flight. I've talked about this before, <laughs> where you can't tell. I mean... E-readers are the worst because you yeah. definitely can't tell what they're reading. But they were holding their book in such a way, and it was a library book, which I always feel like if you're going to travel with a library book, like that's bold, first <laughs> of all, I, for many reasons, which I won't go into. But I was like, I could see the shimmer, shimmer of the library book and the label. Mm -hmm. Could not figure out what they were reading. It Maddening. Yeah, it made yeah. me crazy. Yeah. It really did. Really I maddening. really wanted to know. I left two books, two library books in the seat pocket. One time, I never ever did that, and it was when we were looking for. We were still living in Illinois and looking for houses in Connecticut, and they were books about like house hunting or who knows. I was like, oh, I can't believe that. <laughs> oh so gosh. that's terrible. I'm yeah. so sorry. That's a sob story. It is a sob story. I felt so bad. Yeah, but you know what? They weren't the best books anyway. <laughs> 
<laughs> you were just calling for the library. Yeah, You're no. welcome. I have no memory if they were good or not, but I just felt bad, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's a bold move. But anyway, to each his own. <laughs> right. But show people what you're reading on a plane. Just do a flash every once in a while. Yeah, just let them know, like, yeah. whoa. In case people are sitting beside you. Like, if you see someone, like, with a crick in their neck because they're trying so hard, help, help a girl out. Right. <laughs> All right, All right everybody. everybody. Should I get my other yes. one? Yes. Happy, Happy reading. reading.